Hello, and welcome back to the Ninox Learning Channel. We've been studying how to use the export XLSX function, the new export function in Ninox version 3.12, to create Excel spreadsheets containing our Ninox data. Instead of doing this through the menu, we've been able to do this through code and attaching that code to a button. Everything we've done so far has been affected by the code itself. If we wanted to change the columns or change the appearance or format of the content, we had to go into administrative mode and actually change the Ninox or the JSON code that was attached to the button. In this class, we're going to learn how to create an ad hoc export engine, which allows our users to define the format and appearance of their exports on the fly at runtime without having to go into administrative mode and without having to access the code. Let's see how it works, and then let's see how to make it work for you. For this class, we're going to be using our service and maintenance management system. This is where we track service and maintenance work orders, inventory, the tools and equipment that we use to provide services to our clients. I'm going to go into the Office menu, select Utilities, and go to Export Data. Here we see a selection of NinOps objects, choice fields, multiple choice fields, color palette selections, yes no fields, and all of these controls are dedicated to allowing the end user to define the appearance, the format of their export. Let's see it in action. I'm going to go ahead and create an export, and here's our result. We see that in our header section, row one, we have Calibri font centered, 24 point bold in red, and we see this thick border, top, bottom, left, and right, around each cell in the header row. Our data, rows two and beyond, is Times New Roman left justified, a smaller 16 point font in a black color, data bold turned off. If I wanted to change the appearance of this export, I don't need to go into administrative mode. I don't need administrative rights. I simply change the choices that I make on my control panel at runtime. For example, I'm going to use Time New Roman as my header font and Calibri as my data font. I want my data font to be a little bigger. I want it in bold and I want it to be this color. In addition, that four-sided thick border was a bit much. Let's just go with a bottom border and let's make it a little thinner. I'm going to rerun the export and here's our result. As requested, our data and column header fonts have changed. Our data is now bold, orange, and a larger 20-point font and the border underneath row one, our header row, is a simple bottom border, and this one's thin instead of thick. This ad hoc capability allows us to use the export XLSX function almost as an ad hoc report writer, allowing our users to control the output in terms of visual formatted appearance. Let's see how we made this work. For starters, here on our control panel, which is a simple Ninox form, we placed a number of Ninox objects. We have choice fields that allow us to select the header and the data font, the alignment, and the size of the font in row one and rows two and beyond. A yes no field is used to define whether or not bold is on or off in the header in the data section. Two color pickers are used to find the color of our header font and the color of the data in rows two and beyond. And finally, these two fields consist of a multiple choice field where we can select one, two, or any combination of top, bottom, left, right borders, and then define exactly the type of border we want, thin or thick, single or double, hairline or dotted. To understand how these Ninox objects and fields allow our code to dynamically change at runtime, let's compare the code that we were using previously to the code that we're now using in this ad hoc export engine. Here on the left, we see the soft-coded 
code block that allows us to create this ad hoc engine and let our users control the appearance of the exports at runtime. Here on the right, we see the hard-coded code that we'd been using in previous classes to format the export to Excel. Let's compare specifically the alignment, the font, the size, and the bold controls in these two code blocks. Previously, for our horizontal alignment, we hard-coded the word center, all lowercase, inside of double quotes. To soft code it, we have replaced that with the text result of the header alignment choice field rendered in all lowercase. The result of this command is going to be the text words left, center, or right in all lowercase. So the net result will be exactly what we hard coded, but because it's dynamic, this can change at runtime based on our user selection options. Let's take a look at our font and the font color. Here we defined the font as Arial, hard coded, all caps, inside of double quotes. Here our font is going to be the text value of whatever word, whatever choice our user made in the header font and here in the data font, Ninox choice fields. For color, we're still using the ARGB format, but instead of hard coding the eight digits, which consists of the two character alpha transparency and the six character red, green, blue RGB code, here we've soft coded it. We have a color picker, one for header called heller, header color, one for data called data color. The result of this pick is going to be a seven character code. Let's look at that real quickly. Here is our header color, color picker. We've made our selection and it's going to return these seven characters. Now the only characters that we want are these six starting with the red, then the green, and the blue component. We don't want the hash mark, but this is already text. And here we see how we use that text to create a soft coded color. Here is the alpha transparency code. That's always going to be zero, zero. So we're going to hard code that in the double quotation. We'll use the plus sign to concatenate the last six characters of the seven character result of the header color, color picker. We're going to return the seven character text field, but then eliminate the first character and only use the last six. The result is a soft coded eight character text string consisting of zero zero for zero alpha transparency and the color that our user selected at runtime off the control panel to control the color of the header, and here, the color of the data. Remember, everything must be rendered as text. Here, for alignment, we see that we hard-coded left justified. Here we see that that is soft-coded. We have a choice field called data text alignment. We also have header alignment. And out of these two alignment fields, we extract the text and we make it lowercase. This will return the words left, center, or right. Where this is hard coded and can only be changed by altering the code, this is soft coded and allows the end user to pick their alignment option at runtime without having to have administrative rights. By soft coding our code, by creating dynamic references to Ninox fields and Ninox objects that allow us to define alignment, color, font size, turn our bold on and off, even define specific colors for our data separately from our header, we are now able to use the export XLSX function as an ad hoc report writer. 
The users can control how everything looks. We could even add additional controls for shading and for controlling how different fields are presented. Speaking of field presentation, I want to look at two specific fields in this export, notably fields in columns G and H. G is formatted in US dollar format, while columns H through O are formatted as dates. Again, remember what we said. JSON code is a text editor based code. Everything needs to be in text. If we don't define these dates as text, we're going to get the hexadecimal numeric value of these dates. And if we don't define this as text, believe it or not, we'll simply get the raw numbers without the proper currency formatting. Let's go look at the code real quickly and make sure we understand how we did that. Here on rows 935 through 951, we have defined all of the rows and we've used the key hooks to connect these rows to the proper column. But look what we've done with dates. Here is the order date, the approval date, the completion date. They're all being rendered as text. Here we have the material charge, a numeric field, but this is also being deployed as text. Now the dates, I don't mind those being left justified, but I want the material charge to be right justified. And here you'll see in the definition of the material charge column, here in the style section, I have hard coded right for my horizontal alignment. Irrespective of what the user chooses at runtime from the control panel, this particular column, this numeric column, which I've defined in the row section as text, is going to be presented horizontally right justified as I would expect numbers to be presented. So this way we're kind of tricking, we're kind of faking out the JSON code. We're taking a numeric Ninox field, converting it to text, and then right justifying it using our JSON commands to get the currency presentation that we want. And we see that right here in column G. By combining these Ninox objects and control fields with the JSON code and the way we can control the code, converting numbers to text, letting users pick and bake choices at runtime, we add an entirely new user experience to the export XLSX function. This creates a dynamic export engine that I think your users are going to love. Thanks for joining us. Make sure to subscribe to the Ninox Learning Channel to check out all of our Ninox Learning videos. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Visit us at www.nioxis.com. Here you can learn about different Ninox solutions. You can get tech support through our Ninox Help Desk, which is available seven days a week, or you can schedule private one-on-one -on -one concierge sessions for training, or we can help you build your application. And if you haven't done so already, sign up for our free Ninox Learning Lab. We do this every Thursday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. in the UK, 6 p.m. Central European Time. These free hour-long sessions enable you to learn more about Ninox, features, functions, and solutions. We have open Q&A where you can get answers to all your Ninox questions, and you can meet other members of the global Ninox community. We look forward to seeing you there.